Welcome to another Battlespace Simulations tutorial video. This video will provide instruction on how to build an integrated air defense system or IADS within MACE. In this video we will cover the many sites that comprise an IADS, where these sites are located within the mission builder, and how to add them to the mission area. I'll then explain and demonstrate how to link and relink IAD sites to facilitate communication between various components. Additionally, I will touch on autonomous SAM sites and their application within an IADS. With the knowledge to build an IADS, it will be important to know how to control it. This will cover weapons posture, reaction posture, and manual emitter control. Finally, I will demonstrate the ability to import an electronic order of battle, or EOB, to auto-generate an IADS from an intelligent source. Structure of an IADS The early warning radar continuously searches for aircraft and feeds this information to a Sector Operations Center, or SOC. One or more can be linked to each SOC. Each IADS should contain at least one EW site to provide early warning detection of potential threats. The SOC does not represent a radar itself. Instead, it is used to consolidate information fed to it by other radar sites to make targeting assignments. A SOC evaluates a target and determines which system should get the targeting assignment, then hands the track information off for target acquisition. Within an IADS, at least one acquisition radar must be linked to each SOC. Subsequently, each acquisition radar will be linked to a target tracking radar and SAM site. Please note that multiple TTR and SAM sites may be linked to the same acquisition radar. Height finding sites assist the acquisition radar in refining a target's position before handing the information off to the TTR. Height finding sites are optional within an IADS, however an IADS with a height finder capable radar is likely to improve detection of a target. As with the acquisition radar, each IADS needs one or more target tracking radars or SAM sites. The TTR provides the target tracking capability which allows the IADS to engage a target. Transportable erector launchers provide weapon systems which are used to engage targets provided to it by the TTR. Each TEL will establish a network connection to a single TTR. New to MACE 2019R1 is the ability to define aggregated sites that can represent a surface-to-air missile site. It can be modeled as an individual platform with self-supporting sensors or multiple platforms networked together. Many common SAM sites are modeled as aggregated platforms in MACE, and as such, when building an IADS, you can simply select a SOC, EW, Acquisition, and SAM site. Autonomous SAM sites are typically aggregated sets of platforms that will operate as an independent SAM site. They will not attempt to establish a network connection with the broader IADS and will work independently against detected targets. Anti-aircraft artillery, much like autonomous SAM sites, operate independently of an IADS. Adding platforms to the mission area is accomplished through the Mission Builder tab on the ribbon bar. Note that MACE 2019R1 introduced a new method for searching and adding platforms to the mission area. This new component is the Platform Selector. Within the Platform Selector is the ability to search for a specific platform by name or using the radial button to narrow down to a specific platform category. The first method for creating an IADS in MACE is the Easy IADS tool. The Easy IADS button is located in the Mission Builder tab of the ribbon bar. When the Easy button is pressed, three options are displayed, Easy IADS, Easy Humans, and Easy Traffic. When you mouse over the Easy IADS, you are able to identify the number of systems that will be generated in the IADS, in this case 20. It's important to note the extents of the mission area dictate the physical size of the IADS. If the mission area is zoomed in very far, the IADS will generate all of the systems very close together. The inverse is true for a large mission area. Note that all necessary systems will be generated when using the Easy IADS button. This is the easiest method for creating an IADS in MACE. Another method for building an IADS is to add each component individually. 
The first component we'll add into this scenario is going to be the CP SOC or Sector Operations Center. The next component will be an early warning radar. In this case, we'll use a Tall King early warning radar. Now with any site that radiates, you want to verify that you have good elevation data to ensure that you're not getting an obstruction due to elevation. First, note the elevation source at the bottom of the status bar. Next, you can use the Snap to High Point tool to snap to the highest point in the selected radius. In this case, we'll use one nautical mile. Another useful method for determining whether you'll have radar line of sight is to use the Mask Analysis tool on the Analysis tab of the ribbon bar. It can be used in two ways, one without a target or with a target. In this case, we'll do a drawing based on an RCS value of 24 and an altitude of 5,828. Note any place that does not have a uh, line indicates you do not have radar line of sight. We'll run this analysis again using an airborne target. So first you have to assign the target so that you can run the analysis based on his assigned target. And note we do not have radar line of sight between our early warning radar and the A-10. The next component that we'll add to our IADS is going to be an acquisition radar. In this case we're going to use a two-barm acquisition radar. Note you have red lines that run between each of your sites this denotes that you have a line of communications between them. The next component we're going to add is a target tracking radar. And note that you can minimize and maximize each of these fields here once you've narrowed down. In this case, I've selected IADS, and you can minimize each of these and select any subset of an IADS from there. Let's add a straight flush radar. The next component we'll add is a TEL, or launcher. Let's add an SA6 TEL. And note that your TELs will connect to your TTRs, your TTRs will connect to your acquisition radar, and your acquisition and early warning radars will connect to your SOC. From this point, we have a basic IAD structure and can run this mission. And recognize that these red rings around your launch sites indicate basically your engagement envelope for the missile assigned to it. Relinking sites. By default, MACE is set to auto link all radar sites that are added to the mission area. If you happen to move a site or place a new site, it is not going to automatically regenerate these links. There are two buttons provided at the top of the mission bar that allows you to relink the selected IAD nodes or relink all nodes. In this case, I added a straight flush target tracking radar which has no connection to any of the launchers. If I relink all, you'll note that based on proximity, my launcher will now link to my new target tracking radar. Adding non-autonomous SAM sites to an IADS. In this part of the video, we're going to create an IADS using non autonomous SAM sites. The first component that I've added out to the mission area is a SOC. So I want to add in let's say an SA-5 and note that I'm not using the autonomous variant but just the IAD SAM site version of the SA-5. I'll drag him into the mission area and note I do not have the view right now for aggregates so I'm gonna show the aggregate view. If you'll notice, the SA-5 is not connected to the SOC with any form of communications. So if you want to establish that communication, you have to add a standalone acquisition site. In this case, I'll add a bar lock acquisition radar. Note that it now has the communication links between the SOC and the SA-5 non-autonomous. Following this method, you can add as many components to this IADS as you'd like adding an SA-6, an SA-2, and an SA-20. Again, be, these same sites might already have an acquisition component 
as a part of them, but it does not have the correct radio device to communicate with the greater IADs. So that's why we have to add in the separate acquisition radar. So this could be an uh, easier way to build an IADs if you, let's say you add an early warning, you add an acquisition and a SOC, but you want to add in all-encompassing SAM sites as well. This would be a good method for doing so. Controlling an IADS. Now that we're familiar with building an IADS, it's important to know how to control it. Two components that are very important for how an IADS responds to potential targets are your weapon posture and reaction posture, which are located on the entity controls ribbon of the ribbon bar. Within the reaction posture, you can dictate whether your IADS will auto-react to any potential targets, fight back, do nothing, or anything along those lines. Additionally, you can set your weapons posture, whether you want your entities to be in weapons hold, weapons tight, weapons free, or suppression. Let's run this mission and see what the default state is for our current IADS. And note, within the layer manager, I am currently only showing the radar beam for the selected site. You can change this by selecting the view tab, layer manager, and unchecking the selected site for radar activity. Now note that we can see the radar activity for all of our sites that are currently radiating. Now if you would like to control any specific entity or emitter manually, if you go to the Entity Controls ribbon and select the M for Manual Control, you can assign a target and individually mode through each of the modes. This gives you the full capability to determine which mode is on at any given time. And if that entity has weapons assigned to it, you can actually fire those weapons manually. Importing an EOB. Importing an EOB or electronic order of battle can be done from the file tab and import button on the ribbon bar. In this case, we are going to import an EOB in the PCI format. Please note that importing an EOB with a substantial amount of sites can take a decent amount of time. Now that the EOB has been successfully imported, let's run it. And note that we're getting beams for every single emitter. It may be wise to go into your view tab and your layer manager to check that only the selected site is radiating. This will reduce the burden or strain of all of those beams being drawn on the moving map. 